Hey guys, Felix here. In this tutorial we're going to cover something super basic and super important for programming in Verilog. And that is data types and how the number system works. There are four main data types in Verilog, which would be 0, 1, X and Z. 0, 1, X, Z. Now, 0 and 1 are pretty self-explanatory. They're digital, low and high. X and Z are slightly more complicated. So, um, an X denotes uncertainty. We're not really sure what it is, so we call it X. And then Z stands for high impedance, which essentially means not connected. So those are the four states that a wire essentially can be in. Low, high, not sure, disconnected. So imagine we have a circuit that looks like this. We've got two wires coming in, hooked up to one going out. This might be a zero. And let's say that this wire is disconnected for now. So that's a Z. Zero comes through. Since this isn't really here, it's disconnected. The output here is going to end up being zero. And likewise, you know, if we change this to a 1, of course, this is going to become a 1, and the Z isn't having any effect on it. Now, what happens when we change this to a 0? What happens? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. This is a 1, and this is a 0. That sounds like <laughs> smoke clashing. I don't know. So that is an X. We're not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, chances are one of these at some point is going to overpower the other. Maybe the one is a little bit stronger, and it's going to end up turning that and forcing it into a one. Um, but quite the opposite could happen, and in which case the zero might be stronger and force that one into a zero. So this is either a zero or a one, but we don't know which it is. And it might take it a little bit to get there. So that is an X. Uh, sometimes we use X's as don't cares as well. Uh, but usually this means we're just not sure what it is. And of course, at any point, we can put a Z on one of these values. And then all of a sudden we know, OK, that's 0. That's not connected. This output is a 0. So the high impedance can be useful for turning things on and off, uh, switching between different values going through a wire. X, we're not really sure what it is. And of course, high and low. Now the next thing would be how we denote using these in Verilog. So I pull up a project here. We can just look at some of the code that's already written. You'll see this here, a 1 apostrophe BZ. What does that mean? And then down here, we have a 4 apostrophe BZZZZ. And here's a 7 apostrophe B0. So these are how the uh, how values are assigned to wires and registers in Verilog. The first number tells it how many bits wide the channel is. So if this is a 1, that means it is a single bit, a single value, one wire. This down here is a 7. That means there are 7 wires that you're talking about. 
And if you recall, we have eight LEDs on the FPGA that we're using. So this is talking about six of the LEDs, therefore we're assigning six, or this is talking about seven of the LEDs, sorry, it includes zero. And so we have a seven bit wide channel connecting to it. Then the apostrophe denotes that the type is coming. The types that we have to choose from are B, B is binary, H, H is hex, D, D is decimal, and we can also use O for octet. When we use a B, that means that the numbers that come after here are all going to just be ones and zeros. Um, or they could be Z's or X's. Up here, this is one bit of binary disconnected high impedance. Now, we could set this, and, and there's a warning against doing this right here, but we could set this to a binary one, and that would just be a single bit of one, or a single bit of zero. Let's put that back at high impedance so we don't break anything. Down here, this is four bits binary, and it's assigning all of them to be high impedance, so that channel is totally blocked. Here we just talked about, we have seven bits binary, and they're all zero. Now, uh, how about using some of the others? So we have hex. I could say I want a 16-bit hex number, and then I can give it a hex value. So like 0, A, F, 3. Whoops. And that is going to end up generating something that looks like this. Zero, we're going to get 16 bits out of it. So we're going to get four zeros, and then A is 1, 0, 0, 1, and an F is all ones, and then 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. So when we do this, and we give it a hex number, we're going to get 16 bits out of it'll convert it into binary, into the, the logic that the FPGA uses. Now we could change this. Say I wanted 32 of these. What it would end up doing is just appending a bunch of zeros that we need. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Now, decimal, of course similar deal. Um, if we have 8 bits decimal, that'll allow us to get up to 256, 255. So I could say, you know, 150 and that would end up generating the binary number of 150, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. And then, of course, um, you can do it with an octet as well. So, this is how the number system and data types work in Verilog. And you will be using these to assign values to your wires and your registers, um, turning them on and off with high impedance, and sometimes not knowing what they are with X. And then... Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you, and in the next tutorial, we're going to dive into hooking 
stuff up onto the FPGA in a way that actually does something that you can see. So stick around. Thanks.